Hey there, folks. My name is Alex. My partner Megan and I wanted to fill our lives with experience. So we moved into our van, Betty, and hit the road. When we realized how much more we can do while living out of the van, we decided to go all in for the long run. After six months of living in the van and traveling around, we've decided we want to completely rethink, redesign, upgrade, and improve our van. We're doing a full rebuild. This is the Alex Build Stuff Show. It's the show where I build stuff and I show you. Well, hi there, folks. It's Alex from the Alex Build Stuff Show. It's a show where I build stuff and I show you. This is the electrical episode. Yeehaw! Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Alex, and in today's episode, we're going to be installing the bulk of the electrical system in Betty. That includes solar, chargers, inverter, battery, and all the secondary systems. Before we do that, I want to tell you guys about the sponsor of this video today. It is Rare Earth Elements Solar, or ReSolar for short. I have been working with ReSolar for about a year now, actually over a year now, and I have a lot of good things to say about them. I am pretty adamant about only taking sponsorships from companies that I can directly apply to my life in a van and to those of my viewers. And Re is definitely one of those brands. Re Solar is a small solar component company founded in Quebec, Canada, and have slowly but surely been developing and refining on their product line. Recently, Re Solar sent me two new products the 40 amp DC DC MPPT charger and the 1500 watt inverter charger. If you guys watched the last van tour that I posted, you would have heard me say that we are actually reducing the size of our electrical system. And these two components are the key factors in being able to do that. Here we have the newest in the ReSolar product line, the 1500 watt inverter charger. Prior to this, we had the ReSolar 3000 watt inverter charger. That was mainly because we were running an induction top. Because we are no longer cooking with the induction top, the 3000 watt inverter is way overkill. Although still an impressive piece of equipment, we are now saving weight and space. Now, you may be wondering why we are still using a 1500 watt inverter that is still overkill for our uses, considering we are only charging computers and using small appliances. However, the important part of this is that it is an inverter charger, which means you can plug in the shore power and charge your batteries. That means that if we are at a campground, we can plug the van in to shore power and charge our batteries at a whopping 40 amps. Not only am I really stoked on the functionality of this unit, I am also really, really liking how sleek and slim and sexy it is. All right, on to our next piece of kit. So this right here, this is the ReSolar 40 amp DC DC MPPT. And I'm gonna say right off the bat, if you don't have one of these, get one. These DC DC chargers are great. If you are a person that has very little space and likes to keep all of your gear up on your roof with boxes and stuff like that and you don't have solar, if you drive a lot, just get one of these. This thing is super, super tiny, fits into small spaces and will charge your batteries at 40 amps, which means you don't really need solar if you're driving a lot. If you do want solar, this thing doubles as an MPPT charger, which means you can run both your solar and your alternator charging through this thing. How freaking great is that? So this is the Gen 3 model. This is the Gen 2 model. They're similar form factor. This one is a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. The benefit of having the Gen 3 model is that not only does it look a lot cooler, it also is able to handle a lot more solar panel on the roof. So before you go out and buy this charger up like hotcakes, I just want to leave you with a quick note. Because it is a combined DC-DC MPPT, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of efficiency on the solar side. So if your vehicle is not needing a DC-DC charger, I would suggest going out and buying the ReSolar 40 amp dedicated MPPT. A lot more efficient, about the same size, really good piece of kit. Lastly on the DC-DC, before we move on, if you guys don't know what a DC-DC does, I'll leave you with a really quick and easy analogy. Imagine you have two poles. One is full, one is half full. You have a very thin hose between the two. 
slowly over time, they're going to equalize. Now, take a pump and put it into that hose in the middle and start pumping the water from the full pool into the half full pool and they're gonna equalize a lot faster. The DC-DC charger is the pump. And in case you didn't catch on, the pools are the batteries. So, with the addition of one more 110 watt solar panel up top, totaling 330 watts, a 40 amp DC-DC MPPT, 1500 watts inverter charger, we have a very, very robust electrical system that will handle all of our needs. And the best thing of all is that it has a super tiny form factor, which means we can fit our entire electrical system into a really small box, which I am so excited about because it just gives us more space for activities. All right, let's get on with this install. So what I've done here is I've just made a spot, obviously, for the battery. I've decided I'm gonna keep it open because um, not that lithium batteries have venting or anything like that, but I just figure it's gonna be easier in the in the long run just to have it open. Um, I'm storing this, uh, the 1500 watt re solar inverter uh, right in here. And then what I'm gonna do is have the electrical system just above it on this side. And that will actually give me fairly easy access to all the electrical components if I have an issue. And it'll be all covered up by the driver's seat. Yeah, so next is taking off this and cutting a hole for the inverter and then uh, figuring out where everything else goes. Uh, before we get started on this electrical system build, um, I'll put a card up here somewhere of the episode where I built the cabinet that the electrical system is going at, going in, just so there's no continuity issues there. Um, but yeah, this is where the electrical system is going. And what this is, is the cabinet that goes at the very front of the van and holds our closet, our toilet, and then some other storage up top. And this will go in right behind the driver's seat. As you can see, we've already got uh, a big chunk of our electrical system in place. We've got our re 200 amp hour lithium battery, our 1500 watt inverter charger, 40 amp DC DC MPPT. This is like the bulk of my whole electrical system, which is incredibly impressive it's so small but so robust this system will have literally no problem keeping up with our demands all of our breakers and fuses and little distribution panels and stuff like that are going to go up here and everything is going to be running down here to this channel and um and then it'll be able to kind of go out to to the rest of the uh the vehicle from there. So let's get started. Well, I don't really know how long that time lapse is going to take, but it's been a few hours now, and um, I'm pretty much finished up pre wiring this system. What I've done is I've just wired up all of like the heavy stuff. Um, this is what it looks like. Yeah, there's a few things that I've done differently this time, which I'm pretty stoked on and I'll show you. So first off, um, I'm just gonna say that this system is has like two redundancies. I have all of these circuit breakers here, but then also in here, um, these are all big, huge fuses. I got this from Resolar. This is just basically a distribution panel for all of like the bigger power stuff. Uh, it's all, you know, covered up. Um, you can't really like touch it easily. You have to take the, the cover off, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to change the fuses so that they're appropriately sized, but uh, yeah, it keeps everything nice and clean. And um, now I'm, I'm not using these anymore like there's nothing wrong with these but yeah i mean 
I think that just looks a lot better. As you can see, I've got our DC DC charger and inverter. This is my master shutoff switch. I've put this nice and close so it's easy to get to. So when it's like this, then power can actually come from the battery up into my distribution panel. And, um, and then the rest of the system is completely energized. And I just do this as like a quick means to shut things off. So now, you know, I can quickly reach in behind here, shut off the electrical system if need be, and it's not hard to get to. Um, we got a big, huge 200 amp circuit breaker for the 1500 watt inverter. Now this is slightly undersized, but it just means that the breaker will bl blow a little bit sooner, which is a little bit safer. I have these two big terminals down here. Eventually the solar will come into here and then the uh, solar ground. I think all the ground is just going to go right to here and then it will also connect to a chassis ground. Now I'm not entirely sure if I've really done a great job of explaining this. I don't want to get too long winded. I did just talk for like two minutes. Um, but if you guys have any questions about what I've done here and um, how I like to build my electrical systems, feel free to ask me. Uh, I try and answer your questions to the best of my ability. Also, I like to say that I'm not like a, a ticketed electrician and I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that will be looking at what I'm doing and saying, hmm, that's maybe not right. And I'm not claiming that I have everything figured out, but this is, as far as I can tell, a very safe system and likely not to light on fire, which is always a big plus. Let's get on with uh, wiring it into the van. So there's the electrical system all parked up behind the front seat and I can put my seat all the way back without touching any of the electrical system and then if we need to get to it let's do that and everything's right there including the master shutoff switch which is easy to get to now which is really important I think well friends, the time has come for me to finally wire up the whole electrical system into the van. It's actually been like a full three weeks since I actually started the video, uh, the electrical video. I wanted to get all the cabinetry and stuff like that uh, built and in place before I hardwired this in because basically once I wire this in and you know connect to everything, um, it's gonna be permanent and if I wanna take it out, it's gonna be a very long process. So. Yeah, I'm going to stand here for the next couple hours and just uh, wire this whole thing in. Wish me luck. Well, I'm almost finished. It's looking at like a little bit of chaos in here, but it's almost finished. Uh, pretty much all I have to do is just kind of move this or this uh, electrical system compartments into place, screw it down, clean up, put the driver's seat back in, and then um, I can start hooking up all the lights and switches and all the fun stuff. Yep. <laughs> Cabinets installed. I had for just like a short moment there a realization that I thought that I had miswired something, but I figured it out, which I was really happy about. So that cabinet is not gonna move. It's not gonna come out, hopefully. And uh, next is to wire up all the lights and get everything uh, switched and powered and then turn it all on and see if I explode. <laughs>
guys, this has been one heck of a task. As you can see, I've got most of the cabinetry inside and I've got lights wired up. I've got switches wired in. I have just almost the entire van built inside with a full electrical system. I've got water. I don't know if the fuse is in. Nope. I got some external lights. I've got a stove and, you know, I've got cabinetry with lighting. It's starting to look really, really good in here. I'm really, really excited for uh, moving in and um, seeing what it is to live in a new van like this. So I am still waiting for one more re-solar panel for a total of 330 watts on the roof. Uh, I just need to get that in the mail, hook it up and we'll be good to go. Well friends, I'm going to end the video right here just because it is getting along in length. I have been talking a lot. So thank you so much for sticking with it, for getting to the end of the video. I really hoped something in this video helped you guys out. At the very least, I think I maybe gave you a different idea on how to build an electrical system, maybe gave you a little bit of useful information. I don't know. Feel free to tell me. I love hearing you guys or reading your guys' comments. If you are looking for a electrical system for your van or for your overlander or whatever you're building, make sure to check out Rare Earth Elements Solar. They really are a great company. And if you're a Canadian, hey, support a Canadian company. And if you do happen to go for Resolar products, make sure to use that code Romelander for a 5% discount on your entire order. So that is the end of the video. Until next time, remember to keep on roaming. Later.